skip the adventure of the Huckleberry Finn because I went on Project Hugenberg and it was right there. So we'll take that and we'll make a kind of index for it. So for every word, we'll find out uh, which line it occurs on and in what position, and we'll just store all that information. So something like an index for, an, for a book, except we don't have an, any notion of pages now. So we just do it this way. Okay. Uh, so here's what we will do. We want, since we want to count how many people have the first name, our keys are going to be strings, the name. The name's a string, so that's our key. The value will be the count of that particular name. So in your map, if you look up Bruce, it'll give you you know, the number of all the uh, people whose first name is Bruce. That's, what, that's how we want to set it up. So let's say we make ourselves a free map. And we'll say it's a uh, name count. And let's iterate through all the people in our name list. So let's go string name, name list. Uh, the first thing I want to do is separate out the, uh, the first name uh, and the last name. So one easy way to do it is to say, is just tokenize this using uh, name dot split. So I just take the name and I split split it around uh, the spaces because the name, the first name and last name are uh, separated by spaces. So this will just give me an array for, and yeah, depending on how many spaces there are in it. So in our case, we only have people with two letter names. Uh, for each one of the, well, the two word names, for each one you will just get uh, an array that first contains this, this bit and then this bit. So you'll have Louis and then Routine, or however you pronounce that in French, and whatnot. So from this we just want to top zero, which is the first name. If you want to do it by last name, just change that to top one. If they have middle names, then you could, you know, just, you'll get three instead of uh, an array of size two, and that will work as well. So we have this, let's do, uh, so what we want to do is to increment uh, our count for each of these things. And this, so there are a couple of possibilities. If, if the first time you encounter a name, it's not even in the map. So you really want to think of it this way. I, I found a name, first check to see if it's in the map. If it, if it is in the map, then just increment the count I have. Change it to one plus what the old one was. If it isn't there, then put it in the map in the first place and then do your increment. So what you can do is, uh, check to see, and this is this uses the contains key method. Uh, check to see if name count contains key or not. So if name count does not contain key first, then I'll just do this. I'll say uh, name count of put first and zero. So I'm saying uh, now I've added a key called first, whatever that first name was, into uh, my name map, and initially I've just set it zero. And now I just increment that. So, so let's say old value is name count dot get. And I'll replace it with a put by saying O plus one. So that's basically an increment. So if, so if the key if, if there isn't a key, just put a zero there. And from that point on you know there's going to be a key. So you just get the old value and then uh, you know increment it by one. You change. This put is a, is a function that will overwrite whatever the old uh, association is. So it will overwrite the key associated with first from old to old plus one, or whatever you want to put there. Uh, yes? I was wondering if you could, um, instead of having an integer in the tree map, have an integer array and use that to set page numbers. How do you find it? Like what, would, what would be in your integer array? I'm confused. Like you were talking about using taking in a book, so instead of doing like creating an index. Yeah. So instead of using an integer, make an integer array. Oh, and this is not the index. This is just a count. I mean, we, that will, we will do that in the next example. Okay. So you'll see the index there. Yeah, that, that will have, there will be a map that maps uh, a string to an array list. Uh, which is a little more complicated, but it's not. <coughs> it. Okay, so once we do this, uh, we've got all our counts. So I guess we can just print. So what we have is, there's a function called key set which is a set of all the keys in your map. Whatever, whatever, uh, you know, whatever those happen to be. So in this case, this is just names, and we'll print out, uh, let's, print, let's print out the name, and the guess, and we'll count out how many times it occurs. So that'll be uh, name, and name count of get names. Okay. There we go. So this is what we get. These are, 
So we have apparently five distinct first names. Uh, there are ten people called Bruce, and the six apparently whose first name is Fu, which is very odd. Uh, and then there's one Leroy, two of Lee's, and, uh, and four Richards. So it's, it's basically just a counter, and this is a frequent use of, uh, of math. You can use it for all sorts of other things. Uh, this is the single most common use that I've, I've put maps to, because it, it's a very useful thing to do, especially when you don't know what the stuff that's going to be in your, uh, in your list beforehand is going to be. You don't, if you don't know what the keys are, that's why you use a map, because you can just insert keys at any point and keep on updating, and nothing breaks. Just remember to make sure that you do this check. If you don't do this check, then you'll crash because it will, it will complain that you can't use this yet. Oh, there you go. So you had a null pointer exception because it tried to do a get for you know, some name that wasn't already in the set. Uh, so that wasn't already in the map. And uh, the result was it says there's nothing here. I'll just return null for this. And then your, all your code goes down the drain when that happens. So you usually want to do a check like this. And uh, so contains key is as fast as the contains method from a set. In fact, it's the same thing. Uh, it's at the, if you're using a tree map, it's the same kind of uh, the same algorithm that does contains for a tree set is happening inside tree map. So it's really quick. Uh, and if you're using a hash set, then or, or, or I mean, if you're using a hash map, it's the same contains method that the hash set uses. They're built on the same data structure. In hash in hash sets, they're built. Uh, there's a uh, there's a hash table, and with uh, with tree maps, there's a binary search tree. So it's the same data structure, and in terms of the stuff they share, they all work at the same speed. Uh, so contains uh, is going to work much, much faster than it would work with lists, which have to usually go in a linear way. Yes? 